Our next question is from Kia. I have a somewhat new Mac notebook. I was using a wireless setup when one morning I received a very strange email from my dear friend. I opened the email and there appeared only numbers and letters. Have I been infected with spyware or a virus? Well, Kia, you're probably pretty safe on this. I don't think it was a practical joke by your friend, but sometimes, particularly on Macs, there's some files that are out there that if, they, if a web browser or email program hasn't identified how to deal with that type of a file, say a WMV file or something like that, what it'll actually will do is it'll open up the code for that file as if it thinks it's a text file that it can open up. And so you're looking at all the code and gibberish, the computer code. So that's what you're getting. You're probably not infected with a virus. This happens sometimes when uh, you know people um, send an attachment without checking to make sure that it's in the right format. Just like Tim talked about, making sure your files in the right format will be really helpful to people to be able to you know read your stuff. So that's really a good thing. So I wouldn't worry about it. I don't think it's a virus or a spyware. Uh, Additionally, because you're using a Mac, there's very low risk of, of, I don't think there's a single computer virus out there that can infect the Mac. There may be a little bit of spyware, what they might call a Trojan horse. A Trojan horse, by the way, is a program someone writes that takes advantage of you being gullible. And what that means is that you would actually double click and open a file. Your computer, the Mac, is smart enough to say, this is an application file. This is the first time for you to run this. Are you sure you want to run that? And if you're thinking, wait a minute, this was supposed to be a movie file of the kids at the park, and it turns out that it's actually something else, that eh, could be a little bit of a, a warning sign. It shouldn't be an application. Then it could be a Trojan horse, something that's trying to infect your computer. Just because you get an email from a friend, Unless they say something that's kind of clear that it is them, it could be an Autobot using their email address to send you an email falsely. And so you want to make sure that if ever you send somebody an attachment, don't just say, here's a picture I thought you'd like. You should say, here's a picture I thought you might like because I know you love you know, going to the community park or something like that. Uh, something that would identify specific that it's you know, that person. Okay? Um, so if that answers your question. Okay, last question we're going to cover for this week will be from uh, Ignacio, and he asks, can I install Leopard in a self-built PC? So what he's talking about is, I build my own computer and I install Mac OS X on it, because you know I can do that with Windows and Linux. Macs do that a little bit differently. Now there's been a lot of things in the news about this uh, open PC, open computer that can run, at first it was called like Open Mac, where you could buy one for like 300 bucks and comes with a disk for Mac OS X. I don't recommend that. All it would take would be one firmware update from Apple and poof, your computer's dead. So be aware of that. Apple basically has some information on their motherboards that allows the operating system to work. Without that, you can't do anything. And Apple copyrights that where no one else can duplicate that little chip on the motherboard. So. That means you have to get your motherboards from Apple, which means you can't really save any money by building your own. In a way, you sort of could if you want to, but you're going to pay a lot more than you would if you built it yourself. So, um, yes, you can do it. And if you are just really wanting to do it because you have your own case that you want that's you know lit up, glows, and all that kind of stuff, which is really kind of cool, you can actually do it. And there's a couple of places I'm going to point out to you that you can learn some more about it. One is the osx86project.org. And in there, you can learn some more information about running Mac OS X on a PC. So you might like this a little bit. The other thing you might, website you might want to check out to learn more about how to do it is uh, from dailyapps.net. And it's basically Hack Attack Install Leopard on your PC in three easy steps. And it's talking about Leopard as well. So you might find that uh, a little interesting to try. It might work. It may not work. You can <laughs> play with it and see. If you have an old PC, you don't have anything better to do with. Although Leopard may not want to run on it too well that way. Part of the problem you have is Mac OS X has drivers written for certain pieces of hardware, let's say certain graphics cards. And if you get your own graphics card that isn't one that Apple has already written drivers for or that company ever wrote because maybe they knew this card would never go into a Mac, then you could run into problems, hardware support issues. The drivers are these little you know, files that allow the operating system to communicate with uh, say the hardware, okay? Some things are plug and play and not a problem, but that's not always the case, all right? Well, thanks for your question. Hopefully that answers your question. Let me know if that actually works out for you. That'd be interesting. We'll try to share with uh, the rest of our viewers. You have questions, send them to questions at askthetechies.com. That's what makes this show great are your viewer questions. We love to hear from you. Or if you don't have a question, just a suggestion that you think a topic we should try to cover or a cool website thing that you found or a cool free app, yeah, we'd love to cover it, all right? Uh, for Ask the Techies, I'm Dee Lee Beard.